He was a photographer before he became a... Uh, was he, really? he was a photographer for Life magazine. Yeah, yeah he was a great photographer. Who's that? Uh, Stanley Kubrick. You know, he was a good guy with the with the visual images, which uh, obviously uh, continued. That was the Space Odyssey he did, the Space Odyssey? 2001 Space Odyssey, that's right. And oh. he, he made a piece of music uh, very famous. Can you, can you name the piece? Also, Sprach Zarathustra. It's the, the you know, that theme, you know, when, when they open the movie, it's that... Uh, I wasn't a big fan of... Uh, well, let's just talk about it. You want to talk about what we're shooting? Talk about some of our favorite Kubrick films? Well, we got some favorites. Uh, that's certainly one of them, 2001. Uh, Are you shooting now? Did that, oh, of course. That didn't win any awards, did it? The one Academy Award? Yeah, special effects, no, that, art I direction. That was the one Academy Award that Kubrick won. My favorites are The Killing, Paths of Glory, which is either number one or two best anti-war film ever, Doctor Strange Love, Love that. Clockwork Orange, and then I love uh, Barry Lyndon. I didn't like Barry Lyndon the first time I saw it, but here's the interesting thing about Kubrick. He never won an Academy Award. No, that's except, true. Uh, yeah. maybe in special effects because... Yeah, he, but that was Doug Trumbull that won for he that. He shot all his films in London. It seems there's no films to, today are all special and they just go for special effects. Yeah, that's right. There's explosions and things in there. Story does seems to be taking a back seat to all, all those things. Do There's only six that? or seven stories in the whole world. It's not what you do with them. I think you're right, but I hear that all the time. That, that the seven basic stories. I I, I don't understand. I'll that. name two. Sibling rivalry is one. The son kills the father is another one. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I can't remember the rest of them. Or the renegade Indians kill the. <laughs> <laughs> the settler's family, and he seeks revenge. Yeah, revenge. Yeah, there's a revenge movie. There's the buddy picture. Yeah. And, and there's also what? What did they do? What did they just find out? What was the movie they found out was really a, a classic film? It was a very popular movie. It got it was and it, it was really a direct steal from one of the Greek classics. Hmm. Just, you, you, you don't you, you didn't read about that? My God, Harry, you must have missed a pamphlet. <laughs> I miss a lot. No, you don't, not when it comes so to much films. Man knows every film, why they are, what kind of bulbs they use. Oh, yep. No, I don't have a... What the light bill was. No, David's the one who knows about film and camera. I don't know anything about Commissary that Commissary tab is. You can remember when he was telling you about the camera and the thing he put in shooting these films. He knows all that technical thing. I don't. You don't know that? I'm uh, ignorant. Of it. When I was in the Navy, I got zero in mechanics. I got A's in English and math, but David, he knows all the technical things. Remember? Well, some of them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Enough to get by. Yeah. Strange, because he's a painter, you know. You 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 wouldn't think that he's into the technical. He knows a lot about a lot of things. You know that. Well, you know, nowadays, technical can help you in your painting business because it's become a digital... Paradise. You, you didn't go to an art school at all. You you didn't graduate with an art degree. Or no, I, I didn't. I, I was accepted into the uh, the top Canadian art uh, college, but um, just oh, that's not could, couldn't couldn't put the money together. Uh, uh, you know, it was a little too expensive. It was in another city, but I I was accepted at fourteen. That's all. Yeah, so I figured that you was good enough. You don't have to go. As long as you accept it, you, you figure I can do it and that's it. I must have been good enough. You yeah. know, I submitted my portfolio and... The proof is in the pudding. He's you, a yeah. wonderful you, artist. You it, it's amazing how you're born with that, with that eye and with that steady hand. You can't... You can't <laughs> yeah, you can't really train anybody for that. You know, it's... Right now, it's an eight. going just zap and straight. And you sit there for 15 minutes trying to figure out and get a ruler and a protractor and, and, you, and they just go shh and you see them. I, I always think, suppose you're going to screw up like when, when, when they have art and, uh, and they talk to you and they tell you about the, 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 those type of shows, art shows. Oh, art instruction, yeah, just, and they're just, doing a demonstration. Zap, 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 zap. Sure. It's just some great, great instinctive thing. Here's one thing I would like to ask you. I even Doug. think that that, that uh, that talent that you have to paint is the very power that, the same power, I think, if I'm making sense, that people have to appreciate it and see it. That same energy is in the painting and it goes and inspires that kind of thing. 
Yeah, it does actually. Uh, you're transferring your energy to to the viewer, That's and you, you know, I maybe. Uh, a piano player, you know, I, I kind of envy a piano player that's really fantastic because I'd love to be able to do that and I know that never in my lifetime could I play piano like that. And I'm surprised at how many people sit down and just go. Just go. And then in my case as a painter, I'm surprised at how many people are envious of that ability, no matter how rich they are or powerful they are, they they said, Boy, I'd give that up just to be able to do what you do for a, for right. a day, you know? Right. But you know what, what you just said there, when I was studying at Northridge where I got my degree, my professor, one of the best poets to come out of LA, Ann Sandra, once she sent me a postcard, there was two white cows, a fence in the middle, grass on each side, each cow was trying to eat the grass on the other side. There you grass go. always seems greener. On the other side, was, was that really true, or was well, that just a picture, stage picture? Well, no, that's a saying, right? We've all heard that saying many Grass times. is always greener, that's right. right. No, but I mean, did you, did, you, did you actually see a picture of that? Uh, yeah, she sent me a postcard. Two white cows, yeah. a fence, green grass, each one nibbling on the grass on yeah, the other Yeah, but did they stage that? Do you think they put a little something up for the other cow to go? I don't know. <laughs> then why'd you bring it up, Harry? You can't back it up with facts. Knowledge. But facts aren't what's important. You know, what's no. important is the context. That's true. You know what Einstein said? Einstein says, if I had one hour to save the world, I would spend 55 minutes trying to understand the context and the causes and five minutes trying to solve them. So we have to understand. There's Mr. Joe Turkel who excelled on our last. He's walking by. He don't so want just, to... just, just finding out the... Furthermore, yeah. There's that golden voice, that woman there, there he is. Get my, get a, I'll, get, I'll give her a call. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. There he is. Uh-oh. There's Joe Turkel. Uh-oh. He dropped by to interrupt yeah. or say something. Yeah, Tell him why Stanley this. Kubrick never got an Oscar. Tell him that right now. Just give up a little Joe should know. Are you going to pay me $1,000? I'll pay you $9.99. Done. Stanley never got an Oscar because the, uh, the Directors Guild wouldn't give him one because he, you? yeah, because uh, he wouldn't uh, make his movies here. Ah, he went that's to right. Europe in 1961, spent 50 million dollars a movie, and uh, why they, did were, he want they want? were angry at him. I why see, I see. Why? Why did he want? He said it was America was too violent. In 1961, he told me that when I went over to make The Shining. But he says, Joe, America is becoming very violent. And he says, the quality of the of the men here, of the crew, are equal to that of Hollywood, equal to the best we have. Really? He says, yeah, if, if I had a sacrifice any quality, I'd go back to America. But he said, they're high quality people here and much, much less violence here than it is in America. And that's 1961. And he didn't have to pay residuals. And I, well, he didn't, I know, I never got a quarter. I never got a quarter for all the times they played uh, Paths of Glory. But see, here's oh what God, I heard about yeah. The Shining. In Europe, really? no never kidding. got a quarter. Oh, gee. In Europe... He lies. <laughs> Gloria. Gloria is the queen of Sunset Boulevard. He lies. Gloria the glow girl. <laughs> glow girl. <laughs> hey, you're going to do a phrase, glow yeah. girl. You got a stripper, glory of the glow girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're not photographed. You still filming? Absolutely, I am. Always filming. Camera's running. Camera is running. Never yeah, never we. Hold on. Pull back. I'm pulling back. <laughs> <laughs> and that, ladies All right, and gentlemen, guys. is All right. That's Joe Turkel. Uh, words another of wisdom. Another director told me the exact same thing. His first director was a pretty big man. That's it, Joe. We'll never give. We'll never That's give it, him. That's it, Joe. You, we'll you, never you give him an Oscar. Shot already. About three months later, a small little television director said the exact same thing. We'll never give him an Oscar. So he left America. And he's a yeah. New York boy, just like you. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Bronx kid. Bronx His kid. allegiance should be to America. Is Bronx part of America? I never thought we were an independent country. <laughs> I, I think it is, actually. Yeah, I've been right. there. I, the uh, only one you say the Bronx, you don't say the Queens. Yeah, it's the you Bronx. You don't say the Brooklyn. And I pack my passport you know every time I go to you Arthur Avenue. Cut, rip it. Let me take a look. No, can you no, say no, you can't. You do can't? It, no. Well, you can see them. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, look, look at that. It. It's You've entered the process. Now You're again, uh, well, we're shooting a widescreen HD. How do you like that? High definition. Yeah, yeah that's great. Right. 
Gravy. Now, now, as soon as he pays. Now you got off, another one from me, and you're still not going to pay me. No. Get the number of that Pasadena. I will. <laughs> I'll call you up. Okay. All right. All right. Let Take me care, know Joe. about Ian's condition. Okay. 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 You know who Ian is. Ian no. Abercrombie. Abercrombie. Yeah. Jesus Christ. He's a nice guy too. Yeah. Okay. That's a rough one. <laughs> That's a wrap, Joe. Okay, Joe. I'm, I want to stay here and do some more. There's some. Oh yeah, it's it's captivating, <laughs> isn't it? Thank you. I'll Everybody, give a hand to Joe Turkell. Hey, Joe. Right. Thank That's you, Joe Turkell. Joe. Could I could I do a little poem just to top this off? No, we already finished the show. Didn't we? we have no, one minute. We, we have got, one got minute. a few minutes left here. Okay, let me do a little poem. I haven't done one for a while. Would you mind? No, I, okay. I, I've been waiting for you to come up with one. I'll read the first poem I ever wrote in 1966. His dog. He wouldn't hitchhike, wouldn't ask anybody for nothing. He had a dog. Man asked him what happened to his dog. He died. He went everywhere with his dog. Freight trains all over. Fed him tortillas, friolis. You could pet the dog, but don't touch the man. Why, those two went all over Texas together. That's a long state. Now, he just travels alone. But you know for damn sure, every time he goes through Bakersfield on the Southern Pacific or through Texas, he thinks about that dog and what he used to feed him. That's your first poem? That was the first poem I ever wrote. Are you kidding, a, really? Yeah, I met a guy, uh, I was down in D.C. with my brother. I took the bus back to uh, uh, New York and I met this old guy. And he told me all his stories about his life and this is one of his stories. And I went home and I typed out the first poem. Yeah. Man. I like that line, you can pet the dog, but don't touch it's the man. Great. Yeah, there you go. I love well, that saying, I saw it on the back of a car, I'd like to be the man my dog thinks I am. Oh, that might end up in one of uh, David's great cartoons. That's a great line. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. See, but my boys, dog's the world. The war's down and out long, and the dog looks at him like he's the greatest man in the world. Well, they come home and they got the newspaper in their mouth for you, right? Ready to read it. Yep. Or your favorite loafer that they're chewing the heel out of. <laughs> and they're warm. You know, they say people with animals, their stress level's 20% less. Oh, yeah, yeah. That nonverbal communication. They're, they're calmer than we are? Oh, yes. You know, and they, yeah, they pull you, you right down. When you pet, yeah, when you have an animal and you pet it and you have that nonverbal oh, communication, right. your stress level is down 20%. Yeah, they use them for uh, people who are ill and to give them company. The dogs are amazing. Yeah, because you, you don't think about the IRS and the audit I'll while you're forget, petting I your dog. I swear to you know. God this happened. When I, we got this little puppy, Chow, he came to the house the first day when we had a, a new carpet put in. And as a joke, I ran over to that puppy. He was running and I stopped him right before he got on the carpet. And I said, Sadie, not on the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Stay on. And you know, the rest of that dog's life, the 14 years he lived with us, she never, she'd run full blade off and jam on the bricks and stop at that. That she knew not to go I on had the it. Carpet. She had it that always had a carpet. Well, they hear sounds, right? The oh, they, they understand. Yeah. So she associated some type of threat with go, go, going on that sure. thing, right? Well, they, you know, they they do understand a vocabulary. You, you teach them... Uh, uh, and they say the average dog's about 25 words, some dogs a little higher on the vocabulary that they learn, and they know exactly what that means. So I like the fur. Yeah. The furry. <laughs> Gee, that joke, that great joke about this guy has this dog, and uh, he says, you know, this is a very special dog. Says, yeah. so, talk to him. The dog says, hello, how are you? It's pleased to meet you. That's amazing. It's a man of sort of, is he kidding? Tap dance for me. And the dog, tap dance, the dog is tap dance. It's fantastic, fantastic. You should put that dog in, in show business. Yeah, he wants to be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I screwed it up. It was bad with jokes, but I could, couldn't know. I did. I left something. It was so funny. I had all these talents, but we didn't want it. Yeah. Well, what's the word of the day then? Harmony. Harmony. H A R M O N Y. Harmony. Obama was preaching in the primary and the general. Yes. And now he doesn't really practice it, but harmony. Harmony. Used to work a hotel in the Catskill Mountains called Harmony. The Harmony Hotel, yeah. Catskills, New York. That's so where we had a lot of fights in the Harmony. That's what I'm going to call my underground bunker, Harmony. 
Well, this is Times Times 3 saying goodbye on a beautiful Tuesday, mm -hmm. January the 17th. Yeah. Uh, Harry had to run into a restaurant to heat up and then yeah. go down. Harry never holds. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, David. Thank you.